I am fascinated with all things car and I have made it my business to understand how all cars work, from combustion engine cars to electric motors. And recently I have started to try and understand exactly how hydrogen powered cars work. And as I did my research on hydrogen as a fuel source, I stumbled upon this story of a guy that made a water powered car like 30 years ago and this huge conspiracy theory behind his death. It really intrigued me. So I delved deeper to try and find the truth. Was the car really the solution to all fuel problems of the future? Was Stanley murdered because of the technology? Let's find out. But to start, who was Stanley Mayer? Stanley Mayer was born on August 24, 1940, and from a young age, Stanley wanted to create something new. Him and his brother were always building and creating stuff. His twin brother, Stephen Mayer, said, We were always building something. We went out and created our toys. And when he grew up, he did what he always wanted to do. Stanley was the owner of many patents. And we're not just talking cars. He had patents in many fields, from baking to cardiac monitoring equipment. In fact, he made so many successful patents that the patent office gave him special preference in 1989. And almost all of his patents were accepted. The patent office thought that Stanley's innovations were ahead of their time and were very advanced. Now to give you an idea of exactly how many stuff this dude made, he applied for 200,000 patents in his lifetime. Imagine thinking of over 200,000 different brand new inventions, or even just different takes and advancements on current technology. That's just impressive to be able to think so far outside the box. So I think it's fair to conclude that this dude was really smart. A little more on what he achieved in his life. In between Stanley's inventions, he made time to work on the Gemini space program with NASA, where he made a significant development in aerospace technology. He also worked at the Battelle Foundation, which is a firm based on technical research and development for the greater of humanity. Now you might think, in order to build all these gadgets and toys, he had to have many companies behind him, but nope, most of Meyer's projects he funded himself or they were solely funded. In 1993, Stanley won the award of Best Inventor and received support from countries like Canada, Sweden and England. Now that we know who he is and have an idea of exactly how smart this man was, let's talk about the invention that some say costed him his life, his hydrogen car. Firstly, the why. Why did Stanley create a hydrogen car? Finally enough, it wasn't to be greener. You see, in 1975, Saudi Arabia cut the oil supply to the United States, and as a result, oil prices rose. As time went on, the US was running out of oil, and the lower their reserves got, the more expensive it got. This resulted in corporations going bankrupt. The American automotive industry was busy dying, and the demand for cars dropped to almost nothing. So Stanley knew something had to be done. He got to work on a car that would no longer rely on fossil fuels but would rather use an alternative fuel source. His plan wasn't just for the present, but he wanted to have a failsafe in place for when the second oil crisis hit the US. His idea was to make it possible for the country's economy to stay intact even if there was no oil. Stanley developed his hydrogen car. It worked by splitting the water into its most basic forms, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The hydrogen was then burned and the oxygen would be released through the exhaust. The engine would make power from burning the hydrogen much like a gas powered car uses petrol to create energy. What makes this technology so incredible is the fact that his invention splits the atoms. I mean, even the hydrogen cars of today can't do that. Today you have to use pure hydrogen for your car to run. His car literally ran on water. If his invention was true, it was amazing. With it, the automotive industry would be able to lower emissions while lowering their dependence on oil. And with a fuel source like water, they wouldn't need to worry because there's a ton of water on it. I mean, think about it. I mean, think about it. If you caught some rainwater, you would literally be able to chuck it in your car and boom, you can go to work for free. After a few months of development, Stanley had created a buggy using his technology and it worked. Some accounts describe that he had made an electric cell that could split the atoms and generate power from tap water. Mayer took his buggy all over the country and demonstrated how it works. 
and everyone who saw the car was amazed. Everybody that saw the car agreed that Mayer's contraption could turn water into hydrogen through electrolysis, and it produced way more hydrogen than calculations would predict. Mayer claimed that his car could do what the board of scientists thought was impossible, which was turning ordinary water into fuel and driving the car across the country on water. And before we move on, he didn't just show the car to crowds of people that didn't know any better. One of the people Mayer showed his car to was Professor Michael Langton, who was the Dean of Engineering at Mary College in London. He also showed his car to Dr. Keith Hindley, who was a research chemist. Now, if I say any names wrong, remember I'm South African, we pronounce certain sounds different than other people. So if I, if I say it wrong, I'm sorry. Anyways, even the highly educated people thought this car was amazing and did the impossible. Now, where did everything start to go wrong? Think about it. If this car was truly the answer to all our problems, why don't we all know about it? And why aren't we using the technology? So. Everything went well till 1996. What happened in 1996? Well, in that year, many allegations started to rise up that the hydrogen-powered car was fraudulent and illegitimate. Many lawsuits were made against Mayer, and his water fuel car was later examined by three expert witnesses who testified in court that there is nothing revolutionary about the cell at all, and that it was simply using conventional electrolysis. P.S. Electrolysis is when you separate the molecules of water into hydrogen and oxygen. In other words, creating hydrogen. The court ordered Mayer to repay all of his investors who were against him, as it was claimed illegitimate. Now for the part most people know, the death of Stanley Mayers. On March 21, 1998, Stanley mysteriously died, and many claimed that he was murdered. The story goes that Stanley and his brother, Stefan, went to a restaurant with two Belgian investors. Now his brother, Stefan Mayer, who was present and who claims it had to be murdered, said this. And I quote, Stanley took a sip of cranberry juice, then he grabbed his neck, bolted out of the door, dropped to his knees and vomited violently. I ran outside and asked him, what's wrong? To which Stanley replied, they poisoned me. And that was his dying declaration. Close quotes. Intense, eh? Now, obviously, his death or murder was investigated by police, who came to the conclusion that Mayer died from a cerebral aneurysm. But many who knew Mayer still think he was murdered, because if his technology worked, it could bankrupt many very, very rich and scary dudes. Furthermore, his inventions attracted a lot of attention from governments and many mysterious visitors from overseas approached him with the intention of buying his invention out from him, to which he never sold. At the end of it, why do I believe? Was he murdered and did his car actually work? Let's start with the car. Do I think that he really built a car that could run on tap water? Well, not really. Now, I'm not the smartest dude on earth, but I do have a basic understanding on how electrolysis works, as well on how your traditional fuel cell would work. You see, the problem is that the process of electrolysis uses more energy than it can produce. Like I said in my video on hydrogen, producing hydrogen through electrolysis is a very inefficient process. Now, if he was able to do the electrolysis on board, where does the energy come from to perform said electrolysis? The process actually soaks up more energy than it gives out. That's part of the reason why companies are still not making many hydrogen vehicles today, because it's difficult and expensive to make. But in his defense, everybody that saw the car claimed that it worked, and that it worked through electrolysis. They also claimed that the car produced way more energy than the science board could ever predict. Moving on to, do I think he was murdered? Well, murder is always a better story. I feel like if you believe that his invention worked, that murder would 100% make sense. And, and you know what, even if it didn't work perfectly, it's still a possibility. You see, whether the car worked or not, he was a risk. If he did work, his invention could take away millions of dollars worth of revenue from the super rich who own the oil refineries. So just out of a fear standpoint, it still makes sense because he didn't want to sell his patent either. And like I previously mentioned, there was many who wanted to buy it. So that's everything. 
on the story on Stanley Meyer. Why do you think? Do you think he was murdered? Do you think his invention was real and worked? Well, it was real, but do you think it worked? I mean, he made thousands of working inventions. Anything is possible. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I hope you guys found it interesting. Maybe you, you learned something new. It's quite a cool story if you want to know more about it. There was like full, there's a lot of stuff on the internet. Just go search it. But most of the things point to it not being real. Um, even the Belgium investors, they spoke to them afterwards and they said they were good friends. And he has invested in him over a bunch of years. So it's not even if it was the first meeting with this Belgian investors. They were apparently okay friends in real life as well. So there's many contradicting th things. I personally don't think his call worked. I don't know about the murder. I'm not going to say that I believe it or not. Like I said, it does make sense. But then again, the dude said they were friends. But the dude can say whatever he wants to say as well. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I've got many more videos. I've got less videos. I've got videos on my personal car. Yes. Check you guys in the next one. Please leave a like and subscribe. Cheers, I. I ain't here for the money. I ain't here for the